I mean, the guy's he's played a ton of games. I mean, you look at the amount of experience now that UNC could potentially put into a starting five. I don't know what the starting five is going to be. I'm not saying anyone is slotted into a spot, but let's just say it's the four returners, Caleb Love, RJ Davis, Leaky Black, Armando Baycott, and say you slide Nance in there. I mean, you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of starts and minutes and experiences and games and just, you know, been through everything. So, uh, you know, in college basketball right now, it seems like experienced talent is what wins. And I mean, we talked about it last year. I I don't see how you can have if there's a team with more experienced talent than North Carolina in college basketball next season, which uh, you might get to this in a second. I'm going to go ahead and segue, which changes everything now, man. I mean, this this is not we talked about it when everybody came back, but you're adding to this. This, this is not a fun fairy tale story anymore. This is <laughs> this is a team built to do one thing. Yeah. And I'm not saying that the season will be a failure if they don't do that thing, but it's obvious that, you know, this is I, I liken it to to, you know, like the Los Angeles Rams and free agency when you're like, <laughs> how can they afford another, you know, really good player? Uh, in this case, it's like North Carolina had a scholarship come open at the very last minute, the last possible second for the from the transport portal, and they were able to convert it into a player like Pete Nance, who, you know, is on everybody's board as one of the, you know, top 10 or 12 transfers. Um, So now there's, there's coverage. I feel like at every position, um, you know, before it was like, Oh, well, who might back up, you know, Baycott? Well, there's a chance that Nance can do that. It's like, well, who might start at the four and, you know, do they need another shooter? Well, they've got that potentially in Nance. Then you have the guys coming back in the backcourt, you add Trimble and, you know, some, some growth for some other players. And there's just not a lot of holes on this roster. So um, Hubert Davis now inherits, which I think will be the consensus number one team in the country in the preseason. And so now you have to adjust. I think in his press conference, I believe that was Wednesday, he said last year they had to tune out the noise of everybody telling them how terrible they are. (laughs) This year they have to tune out the noise of everybody telling them how great they are, which is just, you know, again, you know, the day after the Pittsburgh game, who saw this coming? Uh, but I, I think <laughs> adding Nance, you know, it, it just it adds to the notion that, you know, they're they're going for it. And, you know, this team has those kind of aspirations legitimately. No, I mean, the, the roster is set. It, it's um, we thought it was set, you know, on May 1st and then that <laughs> happened. So the roster is finally set. So now everybody can kind of turn the page and really look forward to next season now that we know who is on the team. Um, so I just think, uh, you know, they they've they really do have a chance. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it it's talking out of turn to say that this team has everything it takes to win a national championship. Now, obviously they have to go out and do it, Sure. but I mean, it, in a potential starting lineup, you're going uh, three, third year, junior, third year, junior, fifth year, senior, fifth year, senior, fourth year, senior, you know, I mean, it's, it's, that's pretty incredible in this day and age of college basketball. And it's not like those guys uh, weren't talented or weren't, weren't, uh, weren't wanted coming out of high school. <clears throat> we're talking about most of those guys. I think both Nance and Leakey were, were top 100 coming out of high school. Baycott and Davis and Love were obviously McDonald's All-Americans and top 25 types. So um, it, this isn't diamonds in the rough who were ranked, you know, 545 uh, at age 24, finally <laughs> coming to their own college basketball. These are talented guys who happen to stay around too. 